I don't think a lot of people know this, but I rapped <laughs> on Wawa <Wii. laughs> I was four years old and I had no choice but to take piano lessons because I have four, four older siblings who were already doing it. My siblings all had to go through piano lessons. Eventually, um, my brother became a, a session bassist and then he'd play in show bands and then he'd eventually start his own band. And then they ended up, two of my brothers ended up marrying singers. So. Um, Every day was always like a jam here in the house. It's my brother Karel and my sisters in law, Yosha and, and Barbie. It, it's hard to get that I'm influenced by them because our sounds are so different. Mm -hmm. But they are my mentors in the truest sense because it's everything from musicality, from vocal techniques, from songwriting technique, from, from you know, your, your skills as an instrumentalist they make sure I don't leave anything behind. They're family, so they're the only ones who can kind of tell you straight out, like, this is what you need to do. Well, the assumption is that it's a political family, so thank you for saying it's a musical family. Starting from that moment, I started playing piano when I was four. I was like, I'll probably never do anything else. I found the ukulele. I was like, oh, this seems pretty easy. And so I, I got myself a 500 peso ukulele off of eBay and taught myself somewhere over the rainbow for a week, which annoyed my family. It was so hard for me, even if I was exposed to it, it was hard for me to, to show off and be like, oh, this is what I can do, because everyone was so, was, had years of experience before me. So I thought, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll stick to just playing piano. And then what I would do, so they wouldn't, because I wanted to write my own songs, and I was starting to write my own songs. I'd wait for everyone to sleep at like 3 a.m., 4 a.m., and then I'd bring my keyboard, I'd bring it into the bathroom, as in, it, it was a tiny, tiny bathroom, and then I'd cover, like, you know, like the faucet and everything, so it would, I mean, nothing would get wet, I'd cover everything, and then I'd just lock myself there until day, writing songs. And then when people would wake up, be like, okay. And I remember my first gig ever. It was January 2011, and I was still 90 pounds heavier than I was now. And Barbie had a gig en route with Kitchi and Julian. And she's like, why don't you, you know, play two songs? And then this, this, this two song set, which was, which was supposed to be 10 minutes, turned into like 30, 45 minutes because I was, just, you know, there was banter with the audience. It was, I don't know, I just enjoyed it so much. And yeah, that's, that's where it, and maybe that was the breakthrough, that gig, because it was, it was me kind of figuring out, okay, I, I, I can be on stage. So Kayo Nasen does stand-up comedy. Eventually, I will go into that. <laughs> Don't make me do it now because I'm gonna need a uh, few shots before. <laughs> the one person who kind of, if I see him outside, like, I have nothing but the highest respect for him, which is Kuya Ebe. Because I was such a fan of Sugar Free, and I just wanted to hear his thoughts. His songs are beautiful. I asked him, Kuya Ebe, do you think there's a place for me here? And he was the first person to tell me that I do. And that was kind of the validation I needed to, to fight for a place here. There are opportunities, not the, you know, the... I'm not limited to just staying here. There are opportunities for me to, to explore uh, things outside of the country. If you're a musician in, in the Philippines, at least like to get somewhere, you have to be like tweet thumbs or you have to be like sexy. And no one was really feeling this like smart, funny. I'm not saying that's me, but that's something I wanted to kind of discover. I want to make people laugh. I want to be funny. I can't stop.